Hello, my name is James Cook. I'm an assistant professor of sociology at the University of Maine at Augusta. And I'm here to welcome you to a course called Social Networks, an undergraduate course that is cross-listed in communications and in sociology. I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. I was born in Oswego, New York in the month of April in a snowstorm. I went to high school in western New York and then I moved to uh, Ohio to complete my undergraduate education at Oberlin College where I majored in sociology. Uh, I then took a year to work and after a year of work went back to graduate school at the University of Arizona where I graduated with a PhD in the year 2000, uh, combining study in two fields. One of them political sociology, the study of politics and relations in politics, and the other social networks, uh, mathematical patterns of contact between things that communicate. That's what we'll be talking about today. My dissertation combined the two to study the United States Congress from a social network perspective. Then, after I graduated from uh, graduate school and got my PhD, I went to work at Duke University. I taught there for about six years, and now I teach here at the University of Maine at Augusta. I'm married happily and have two children, and I live on the mid-coast. Now, think about that introduction. How much of that description of myself was actually about things inside of me. Almost nothing. Not even the part where I described my family and I said I was happily married. Uh, perhaps you could say that I expressed some happy emotion, but that emotion is in the context of a relationship. The places where I grew up, the places where I went to school, the affiliations that I have with disciplines, the credentials that I just told you about, all of those are things outside of me. The institutions that I've been working at, the place that I'm employed at now, it's not something that's inside me. It's not something that you can uh, find out by looking at me. Uh, I don't have UMA tattooed anywhere on my face or my forehead or my hands. It's not inside of me. It's something, though, that is very important to understanding who I am. And in fact, if you ever go to a party, what's one of the first things that people say? What do you do? And the answer to the question, what do you do, is usually about a set of affiliations that people have with groups and a set of relations that people have with others. Oh, I, I work over at Con Edison uh, and I'm a general manager there. A position within a group or, oh, I'm Cleo's friend and Cleo invited me to come here tonight a relation, nothing about the person inside themselves. And this is really where the insight of social network analysis begins, by saying who we are is not something that's based inside ourselves. That's a, a psychological idea. Instead, we have a sociological idea that you are, in a real sense, the sum of the history of your affiliations, belonging to groups, and your relations with other individuals. To put it another way, you are who you know. Now that's an audacious idea, but I think in many ways it's a powerful idea as well. And that's what I'd like to show you this semester. So, why should you take this course, and if I may be so audacious, why do I think you should recommend it to others? Well, the first reason is that uh, it's a very new field. Only in the past five to ten years has the field of social network analysis moved from a uh, cottage industry of really just a few dozen researchers in the world to now booming and involving thousands of scientists all working on the idea that the pattern of relationships that you have and affiliations you have uh, defines the course of your life, defines your fate in some sense. Uh, 
in that sense, if you're interested in getting on top of the newest scientific gravy train, uh, if you're interested in finding out about a new hot topic, uh, something that's exciting, uh, and that isn't just the same old academics, this might be a course for you. Uh, as we'll see in just a moment, my uh, use of the word gravy train isn't an accident. Often new fields can be quite lucrative. Uh, there are entire fields uh, dedicated to, in business, exploiting social networks. But let's say you're not so strategic. Uh, intellectually, uh, there's really something very interesting to be said about social networks. Because what social network analysis offers in its image is at once very simple and yet at the same time capable of handling a great deal of complexity. Social network analysis says there are just two things in the world that can, at base, define most of what we see around us in societies. Just two things. Nodes and ties. Where nodes are things that can communicate, sometimes they're human beings and sometimes they're other things, as we'll see in this course, but just something that can communicate, something that can send a message, some kind of information out to be received. The second thing is a tie, which is the communication itself. Nodes and ties are all there is according to social network analysis, to understand. Now, if that was all there is to social network analysis, we'd stop the semester here. But the real genius of the people who came up with social network analysis lies in the fact that uh, it's a great deal of complexity out there in the world that we see. And that that can be modeled by using these very simple elements, nodes and ties, and the pattern that they form when you get a number of nodes and a number of ties. They create something called a social structure. And if you can understand that social structure, you can understand the great big picture of the world around you. Just as on a TV screen, if you look at any particular element, they're just dots. It's the pattern of the dots that makes the picture that enthralls you. It's the pattern of the dots and the lines between them, the nodes and the ties between them that makes society so very interesting. You may find it fruitful to entertain social networks as an anti-American idea of sorts. And I don't mean that in the sense of patriotism, but in the sense of culture. It is a long-held American idea that a person is one's own that we belong to ourselves, that we make ourselves. The entire idea of the self-made person lifting himself or herself up by one's bootstraps is an American idea. That you can create a new identity and you can do it from within yourself. Social network analysis, on the other hand, says what's inside your head, what defines you as an individual, doesn't count as much as the connections that you have with others. The social network idea says that you are who you know. The social networks revolution can be seen in publications within the past five years. Book after book after book, treatise after treatise after treatise has been presented on social networks in the academic world. This has expanded out into the business and professional world where there is an entire cottage industry of people who are building entire careers off of the management, analysis, and presentation of data regarding relationships, both offline and online, where social networks are referred to as social media. This social loomscape demonstrates the extent of business formation in a wide variety of social network applications. Social network advertisements, social scoring, microblogging like Twitter, macroblogging in uh, platforms such as Blogger and WordPress, and Joomla, which by the way is the backbone for the University of Maine at Augusta site. There are plugins, there are widgets that connect websites to one another, connect people who want to share information about jobs, who want to share information about photographs, who want to share information about music, 
And behind this all, there is a business based on tracking how people relate to each other and selling that information. It's a brave new world out there. And whether you want to be a part of it or you want to resist it, it certainly is valuable to understand it.